Hello there Brick Fanatics, it's time for some speculative LEGO Technic. The LEGO Group has today unveiled three new LEGO Technic sets. 42178 Surface Space Loader, 42180 Mars Crew Exploration Rover, and 42181 VTOL Heavy Cargo Spaceship. These are not your average LEGO Technic offerings. With one or two minor exceptions, at the moment LEGO Technic is focused almost entirely on recreating real-life vehicles, things that actually exist on planet Earth or indeed on Mars but that still somewhere exist in the universe. With these new sets though, LEGO Technic is branching out and giving us things that don't have a real life counterpart. These are essentially science fiction, albeit science fiction that is heavily informed by NASA and conversations with actual scientists. The largest of these sets, the Mars Crew Exploration Rover, imagines what it would be like if humans actually do get to Mars one day, uh, and what a rover that is designed for travelling on the surface of Mars would look like. This was designed in collaboration with NASA, and apparently NASA had a lot of strong opinions about what should and should not be included. For example, always an important part of space travel, NASA was very keen on figuring out where LEGO Technic astronauts would do their poos. We got a lot of fascinating insight into these sets at recognised LEGO Fan Media Days in Billund earlier in the year, where the sets were shown off to us and there was a Q&A session as we were allowed to ask a few questions about what exactly went on in the design process for the sets. That's not all, we also had the opportunity to interview some of the designers of these sets and ask questions about how exactly their collaboration with NASA worked. Here then is the full half hour reveal presentation for the sets, and if you're interested in knowing even more make sure that you hit the subscribe button because in a few days we will be publishing our full interview with the designers as well where we go into even more detail. Today we are going to share um, three SKUs, uh, they are space related, um, and they're all very very new, fresh out of the box. Uh, so for us it's the first time we're going to present these models to someone outside of Lego, so we are pretty excited, not prepared <laughs> uh, for questions and stuff, but um, yeah, we'll do our best and uh, we'll invite. So these three SKUs are uh, first up here, uh, 2024. Um, it's going to be unveiled in March, um, if I recall it correctly, I think. Um, and they're all part of the the space um, theme that we want to develop in Lego Technic. Uh, that's the first time in a long time that we we had the opportunity to work with such SKUs. Um, so this one has made in uh, has been made in collaboration with NASA um, directly. So it's pretty cool. And these two are a bit more fictional. So if you if you are looking at the timeline, this one goes first, and these ones are way more futuristic. Uh, and that uh, that is also a first for us yeah. that we could explore this universe. So we hope we did a good job. <laughs> yeah. I'll start with the first queue, which is a 42178, the surface space loader, the one I got to work on. Uh, this is a transforming vehicle with a rising and lowering suspension, steering, and a crane in the back to pick up a uh, cargo. And then more questions on that later. Some fun <coughs> new, uh, new colors for you guys to take a look at uh, as well. Yes. Uh, and then the, the, the big one is the VTOL Heavy Cargo Spaceship with working nacelles, landing gear, uh, self-leveling cockpit, and a grabber function. Whoa. <laughs> which you may or may not have seen in Technic before, <laughs> and may or may not work with the other model in this SKU line. So, very, very cool. And also, just for fun, <coughs> we have a little vehicle that comes out of the... Uh, like a little rover. A little right? rover that yeah. comes out of the, the cargo. And, and then you get some, some cool details here as well. You can open up the, um, the nacelles and look at some detail, which you can ask about later. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun to play with. And so this one is the Mars Exploration Vehicle. Uh, so it is for a crew to explore Mars. Um, when the brief came in into my hand, uh, I had the chance to talk with NASA and had a little chat with uh, how, they were supposed to, how they were seeing uh, exploration in space um, and what kind of vehicle they, they had like in mind. 
so after a few brainstorming, uh, which I was very lucky to be part of it, I mean, it's uh, not every day that you need to talk with the NASA engineer, so I had a lot of fun. Um, so we came up with, uh, with this concept. Um, so this is, um, let's say, um, like kind of a camper van for, for space. Uh, you have a space for two powerful crew member. Um, you can open here, and there is a whole uh, living space inside. So you have a training belt and shower, toilets, restaurants, all that the astronaut needs to survive on the planet. Um, and then at the back, there is a load of um, cans uh, for findings. Uh, so you have a crane that you can operate. So you unfold it like this. All right. Yeah, just did a bit. <laughs> Save some time. So you can fold and unfold uh, these gears. So this is a fuel cell generator. Uh, it's important for, to recharge the vehicle uh, in space. Um, so yes, and you can actually plug it and recharge the vehicle. So there is three, three slots on the side here. And you can mimic, so you're in charging mode right now. You need to, to have energy back in the, on the vehicle. There is an elevator here at the back. Um, the first thing the people from the NASA told me is like their suit will not be fully, you know, they can't jump on it, they can't run or things like that. So they need something to, to get off uh, this vehicle. So I built an elevator. And then you have uh, containers, uh, one to recycle uh, the trash from the inside, from the living space, not to pollute uh, the planet. And another one for the findings, so that could be rocks and things like that, that they bring back to the mothership to be studied. Um, and then there is some other cans, and these are for emergency. Um, so if you run out of water inside the ship, inside the vehicle, you have a container for water, you have container for hair, and you got um, hydrogen can. So in terms of like recharging and rechargeability, uh, we know that hydrogen will be a big part of our future, and uh, we want to to teach the kids and you <laughs> uh, how it works. So when you basically plug your your hydrogen can here, there is like a chemical reaction that happens there, create electricity, recharge the vehicle, and you drive away. So. This is also like a learning. Um, in terms of um, wheel drive, we have like six wheels. You can notice they are gray for the first time. Um, and it's uh, fully uh, suspended. So there is a live axle in the front and a pendular axle at the back. So it's the same principle of their Mars rover that is actually on the planet right now, but turned 90 degrees. So <coughs> it's the same system with the pendular axle. Yes, a uh, lot of things on this one. Um, <laughs> um, this is radar. Oh. So it's used to triangulate um, a part of the work, um, the work area. And you can deploy a companion here at the back. So it's kind of a a mini rover that's a bit stuck at the moment. Come on. There you go. Yes. So it's like a little dog that you <coughs> carry with you. And there is some tools at the back that you can attach to the arm. So there is a hammer, a chainsaw. I like this combo the best. Um, it looks very mean. <laughs> And you, you can like work on something like crushing rocks and finding them into the, the box. So there's a lot of stories around the model. Uh, that's for me the first time I, need to, I needed to focus what's going to happen around the model, not the model itself. Um, so there's a lot of details that you can find, like the, the living space and things like that. Um, yes, and um, because of uh, transportation uh, problems, um, NASA found that this vehicle was a bit too long to transport from point A to point B on the planet. 
So we needed to come up with a solution, um, which I'm going to demonstrate to you now. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, so we made it smaller, uh, <laughs> just, just for it. You can lock it back. So you can still drive it around on this compact mode. Of course, it's not meant to be, but um, it's just for for the astronaut to load it on the ship and carry it on another location to explore planets. Yes. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I think like the first one is to to get the collaboration with the NASA to have the STEM uh, thing. So to get their learnings and put it into a vehicle, even if it's like 20 years from now, let's say this one, for example, I hope so. <laughs> um, and, and this one, we're more into like, what do we imagine as a designer yeah. today without, without limitations, in a way. That much of limitations. It was pretty broad. It was, it was make a spaceship or make a futuristic vehicle. So that was a, and there were a lot of iterations of each. So we finally came one that, that made sense on you know how it looks and how they work together and if it was buildable for for the H marks yes. that we need and you know this was this was super fun to test with the with all the kids. With the kids, yeah, definitely. On the color scheme we wanted like like a theme that can be perceived as okay, these are for space and only space. So this combo uh, we we see now very strong. Uh, we wanted some contrast. Um, it didn't came from from NASA or other um, like inspiration. I think it came from us. Uh, yeah. We had the chance to work with a new color, um, which and is uh, four <laughs> four zero two. So this uh, vibrant orange. Uh, this is totally new. Um, I don't think you've seen that one before. Oh. I don't remember. I don't remember yeah. My I knowledge so. is very limited so. too <laughs> on colors, but. Um, we had to we had to bring this color uh, to to these vehicles so to make something more iconic. Um. And I, I can only kind of talk a little bit about the shape from the designer. He's a, who who was the designer for this is is, mm. is a fantastic sketcher and, and designer and he's his the shaping that comes out of his head is really ultimately what led to this. So mm. uh, it was very much designer led where it came to the design uh, yeah. of the of the, course. Uh, the models. In Nego Technique, we always focus on functions, um, so we didn't want to get away from that. Yeah. Being like a super spaceship, easy with yeah. guns and you know thrusters, like yeah. something that we could have made with a bit more, you know, ease yeah. in a way. But the way that we introduce functions yeah. to to, to like landing gears, grabbers, everything grab like that, is work. something that the Nego Technique fan is looking for. Um, and so, for us, in a way, it was like to how we can integrate that to a package that will satisfy the most, I think. And um, so in all these three, I think there is a very long list of functions that it can be or introduction uh, to Lego Technique or a, a bit more advanced in, in terms of like linkage and, and things like that. So I think it's kind of a, of a showcase of what we can do. Um, when we can. And What's also buildable for, for yes. you know, all the all the different age groups that these are these are ready for. I mean, mo most of the time we were confronted with color changes, um, mm -hmm. and especially with when it comes to tires. We, yeah. I mean, the first meeting we had with NASA, I said like, okay, can we use rubber in space? And they were like, ah, yeah. oh, with such a variation of temperature, you can't <laughs> use because tires will explode or something like that will happen, <laughs> and um, it's not great to change the tires in space. Uh, so that's why they go with uh, kind of a metallic um, for more traction and stuff like that. So, and so the best result for us is was to change the tires to grey to make them look like uh, it's it's based of like metal or some sort of yeah, something else than rubber. Bit of a big deal to change the tires to yes. grey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we also have a new bone gear, uh, which actually <coughs> made this model possible, uh, which is. Um, it offsets the bone gears 45 degrees so that you can actually build axles straight and straight while having the bone gears uh, into each other. Yes. Uh, that, I believe, was on all of these models. Right? Was you, you no, have this one? one. Not yours? No, nope. yeah, we took it out. Yeah. But uh, there's, there's one in here that's uh, pretty cool. And I think another, another color windshield as well. When these two briefs came along and we were like, okay, 
that's gonna yeah. be cool to work on, right? That's the first thing that yeah. pops into the head of, of the designer, saying like, okay, now we have the freedom, without going too far, uh, too crazy, right? Um, but but we could have like this little leap mm -hmm. uh, into into the future, which was like very refreshing for for all of us because then our design meeting were a bit more, you know, free, mm -hmm. yeah, energetic. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they still kind of asked us to have kind of realistic features, mm -hmm. steering, uh, suspensions, make sure things were still kind of felt kind of grounded w within the real world. Like, you know, it's it's grabbing instead of a tractor beam, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. it's, a, it's a jet engine that we know is real that yeah. we can move. Um, so a lot of the functions are based in reality and then shaped mm -hmm. to make it look cool. Or it's or possible. In space yeah. space it's like when you look at this vehicle, you say like, okay, it can happen. That right. that is like where where we wanted to set the the limit, right? We had like a lot of inspiration in vehicle when we did brainstorming and things like that. Um, the most important is also we had to look at the broad portfolio, uh, all in all. Uh, so we haven't got so many uh, freedom on choosing colors in color combo. Um, I think I think this is a very striking combo, and it's very appealing to the whole portfolio. Meaning that these are, you know, standing out uh, in a way as being the space, um, and it's like it's like the yellow with our machinery, right? So and it gave us a chance to work with each other in terms of colors and color selection, exactly. element selection. Yes. Could we have common things within within the models, uh, and then eventually have a design language that went through the the three models? which we don't normally get to do in tech. No, actually. I'm sure it's for the first time. You've talked a little bit about things that um, NASA had specifically said you can't do because of logistics of real life things. Was there anything that NASA said they wanted you to include or things that they felt they wanted you to kind of get across from these models? On the first meeting with NASA, um, so we had the chance to like ask this question, the same question that you asked just now. Um, and the first thing they said is like, they need toilets, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we were joking about this, but it's yeah, true. Exactly. Like, the first thing they need is like toilets and like a uh, training belt. Uh, the rest of it can be, it's, it's very much focused on uh, human condition uh, when you explore a planet, so this is the main focus. Uh, what they are studying in space is human condition, um, and for the rest of it, it's, um, it, it was just like, like a nice exchange that we had to, to do with, uh, with NASA. Yeah. And just just tell me for just watching him design having uh the transformation function was something NASA wanted that they needed yeah. to fit in the rocket so originally that was, was the first comment really because like yeah. usually like but the first sketch of this model was like this big <coughs> and they were like no you need to make it shorter that like that design um challenge is what we expect from brainstorming mm -hmm. um and so that leads to a lot of refinement changes and things like that. It gets the model more interesting, I think, after this uh, chat that we had. Um, yeah. It's great to see your reaction to it, so yeah. it worked. <laughs> In my case, a bit of everything, to be honest. Yeah. Like, uh, it could have been robots, uh, yeah. could have been like like usual uh, trial truck, uh, especially for for the wheel movement, how the, the vehicle behave on, on, a, on such like ground, uh, you know. Um, and, and the rest of it like was, was very sci-fi, like all my, you know, my culture into sci-fi went into, into place working on this one saying like, okay, I need four lights in the front because it looks cool, I need a winch, I need everything, and, and, and so I was keep on building on passion, to be honest, and what I like the most, uh, that's what we do uh, when, we <laughs> when we start designing a model, we, we just go with, uh, with passion point, and, um, and that was the main, the main references I had uh, when I was uh, a kid, or still now, yep. uh, playing with video games and things like that. So I think it's, uh, it's a bit of everything. Uh, when you design Lego technique and like when you design Lego models, you, you see inspiration everywhere. Uh, it's, it's very easy to, yeah. I'm, I'm a big space nut from an old space classic space series, Blacktron, and all that stuff, so those were great inspirations for me. Uh, M-Tron especially was a great experience. Uh, I worked a lot with Lego Mindstorms uh, in my career, so this was, this was I tried to get some of that in there. Um, but then eventually the models needed to work together, so we were actually just really looking at his model, this, this bigger model, uh, 
as inspiration for the shaping of this one and, and some of the design lines. That was part of the fun, I think, <laughs> just to kind of walk around the building and see the guys who designed your childhood uh, be like, hey, I'm doing one, too. <laughs> you know, trying to find it, you know, making sure that the space logo was correct, uh, make sure that was correct, and, and seeing if there was any references we could put in from older, old, older sets. Uh, yeah. I think when you walk around the innovation house with these three, there yeah. is a lot of questions. Like, it's the first time they see stuff like that in, in Lego Technic, techniques, yeah. so they were coming like from everywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you doing this? Oh, you like yeah. <laughs> And so there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of good guys in, in innovation house to help us. Uh, yeah, definitely. definitely. I think the, the huge amount of system was made to, as you say, details. Uh, mm -hmm. In Lego Technic, it's very difficult to make like, um, you know, these little poles, for example. Yes. If it was made in Lego Technic, it would have been like that big, uh, right? <laughs> and so for, for this scale of vehicle, it's, it's kind of going to like, hmm, okay, how do, you, how do you set the scale, right? So the only thing we got to set the scale in Technic is the seat panel that is there, right? Mm -hmm. And from here, you work at what it's around. Uh, so there were no limitation in terms of like, you, can, you should use less system than more Technic and things like that. Uh, it's used in a way that the amount of details is well deserve, right? So mm -hmm. I think the whole inside here is made of system. So toilet, shower, uh, restaurant, beds, uh, all the RV camper van thing <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is made of system because like the amount of details you can do and the amount of fun you can have is, is way better than using Technic, of course. So. We, were, we were really, you know, thankful to be able to maximize what we could put in for the, for the price of the models. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have that particular information, but uh, I believe they're pretty well packed uh, for, for, what, yeah. for what, you, what you pay for. And all of these vehicles, all of these three, have started with the function in mind yeah, first. first. Um, not the styling, uh, but like the way we say, um, uh, shape for the function, right? Um, so that's exactly the kind of example we want to, to show our audience. And of course, we have the, the seat panel uh, that can yeah. fit the minifigs. That is so all we know, right? So um, I, I started with, with that in, in mind, uh, saying like, okay, there is space for two crew members, yeah. and that's it. Uh, so that is roughly minifig scale, is it, do you think? Yeah, it's, a bit, it's in between, right? It's, it's just a weird, just a weird proportion thing. You can try to put a minifig in there, if you like. I'm sure we will. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, and that's great. I mean, that's, great. that's, 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 that's I mean, the I'm whole idea happy, of it, right? You can, it's very nice. Uh, the seat panel was kind of common between the, the three, and, uh, yes. and uh, they reflect the, the crew number. Yes, on the, on the exactly. Seat, so. I mean, we could have been to, to that small, to that big, uh, in terms of scaling. Um, we start with the tires, easy as it is, uh, and then and then we build from that. So, tires, seat panels were like the key element to shape. Yeah and like set the scale in stone, right? Um, and then from the that, we just well. like yeah. build around it, yeah. so yeah. And the cockpit as well. Yes. This was also, uh, also something new for Technic to put a cockpit in. Um, but uh, was, there, was there a question? Can we, can we have a cockpit? I think it, it helps give it some fantasy feeling versus having everything be open. Uh, I think you wanted to put one in yours. Yeah. But, uh, ended up more traditional in terms of... Yeah, because we want this separation in the timeline, saying like mm -hmm. this one is like the, the older brother, right? And these are the latest like, in the future, right? So they deserve a cockpit. I'm like a <laughs> bit more old school. <laughs> uh, no. 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 no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> 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 no, but yeah, I mean, I feel it. I mean, I only like to have it. This one is 11 plus something. Uh, it looks very complicated, um, and it's made in modules. Um, and from that, you can have breaks and things like that. So it looks difficult, but it's super easy, like like entry level kind of. Even if it's look like, massive and things like that, but forget the scale of it, forget the size. And it's just everything built in modules, uh, which is. It uh, was still a build for children, uh, for us, which which is uh, probably harder to do. Actually, for for me, it's always been harder to, to make it simpler to, to, to build and, mm. and uh, buildable for for a younger age group. And then 
Uh, be just because it's larger, it's going to get closer to, to 11, 12, and then mine's for a younger age. But uh, of course, there's something in there for you guys. I mean, that's that's what I'm, I'm, I'm looking when I design a vehicle. Like, all of these elements are here for a reason. I don't overbuild. Uh, we usually fell into that trap of overbuilding things, and it gets, like, very complicated. Uh, just snap of your finger, uh, and it gets, like, to 18 plus, and, yeah. and then you're off. Um, so getting back to, to the basics um, of a simple function all together, it's like yeah, it's the recipe yeah, for, for a, a model in, in Lego Technique. It's like you can have, I mean this one has like seven more function on this one, right? Uh, but they're all easy <laughs> in a way. It's one easy, one other one, one other one, and then you build all in all together, right? And, and then you have a fantastic model that looks like very difficult to build, but it's not. Yeah. There's a lot about uh, element selection, like what, what pieces are, are in different colors, uh, why we chose a certain color for an element, and that's part of that uh, complexity and, and simplifying for, for age groups or, or really any age, like there's, there's a kind of a specific experience that we want, and then trying not to mess up the design of the model. So. I'm sure you guys have seen the weird colored bricks, and you'll probably find one in here, uh, in in a model. It's and it is it is part of that complexity to to help to help build uh, at any age group. So if someone that, else is using it. Yeah, <laughs> that color arrived at a point where we were fighting colors. <laughs> um, in a way, when when we have the opportunity to use a new colors, we take it. That's it. I mean. We don't have that many chances, <laughs> so if we see like oh, okay, we can use this one, then then we introduce it. Yeah. Of course, it was uh, it was part of the part of the, the design research thing. Like okay, there is this new one, what can we do with it, and and, and how how many like frames we got. So basically, we change we exchange a lot of elements between these ones and this one and this one. So we couldn't make the whole elements orange, right? Uh, we had to to choose precisely which one we're going to use it on, on that color. So um, that was also the challenging part. Yeah, it, was, it was great to, I mean, work with these guys to, to kind of pick which elements went to each model so that all three of them could use it. Yes. Right? Developing it in the same time. Developing yes. it at the same time, yeah. yeah. So that, yeah. Was, that, was, that was a pretty cool to do that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. There you have it, some absolutely brilliant insight there into the process of designing LEGO sets in collaboration with NASA, even when the LEGO sets in question aren't based on anything on planet Earth or in the stars. This is proof that sometimes imagining space travel is better than the real thing. As a reminder, we have our full interview with two of the designers that worked on these sets coming in the near future, so make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification bell. Make sure that you leave a comment down below, by the way, letting us know what you think of the sets. If you are going to be making a lego.com purchase in the near future, make sure that you use the QR code, which is on screen now, or the affiliate link, which is down in the description. It just gives us a little bit of a kickback if you make a purchase through that link. Make sure that you also sign up to our newsletter at brickfanatics.com so that you never miss anything lego related ever, ever again. And go on, give this video a thumbs up. You know you want too. Thanks very much. Have a great day.